Okay, this will hopefully be my final tutorial for quite a while. I've basically I've done what I set out to do. If we go back to my original storyboard, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, I've got only render set. Okay, we did that. His face whipping around. In fact, we can just look at it. All right. Um, this will be kind of condensed, but whatever. All right. So we've got, we start off with his face whipping around. Bam. Okay. And now we get to that chevron thing. Okay. Bam. And now we got him churning, cocking, slow motion, zoom in on the bullet, rotation, bullet, bam. Okay. And now that brings us, we are basically to this point. We're tracking the bullet. We get to that point. And now I told you I blocked this out because I don't want you to see what's going to happen in my little story. But what we're going to do is we're going to have, now we're going to take the camera and we are going to go and zoom in on this, uh, this box. And so the, we're going to lose the, uh, we're going to lose the track of the bullet. Now, let me go back to the big here. Let's go back to the dope sheet. Uh, let's turn off my... Um, background image. Okay. All right. And we can get rid of these now. Those, remember, were just for, for like, some depth. So we've tracked the bullet. Boom. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is... I could add another camera and do like I did before, add another camera here, bind it to a marker so that we switch camera. And that's probably, that, that is most definitely the better way to go, but I am lazy. I am lazy like you would not believe. And so what I am going to do is I am going to just take this camera and I'm just going to move it forward to where we're zooming in on the box. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So what I'm done, I've got the camera selected. I added a keyframe there. I'm going to move a keyframe back. I'm going to add a keyframe there. And what that does is it basically just locks the curve. Okay, so now the curve is locked, like, f up until here. If I were to go to the curve editor, the curve is locked. And now if I move one frame forward, I can move that camera a long distance. Like that. That's maybe too close. I just want a good look at the box, maybe. Now the idea is the bullet will have landed, will have hit this box somewhere below the camera. So I just kind of want to see just the top of the box. So what did I do? I put in a keyframe one before the transition, right at the transition, and then one right after the transition. And so now we just get a look at the box. And we're going to have a dramatic pause of maybe a second, a little bit less than a second. And now I am going to put a shatter modifier on this thing. So the box is all of a sudden going to explode. Like it just got nailed with a, with a, a bullet. So I'm going to add a particle system. Now what frame are we on here? Well, first off, let's, let's make sure the timing looks good. All right, so let's check our timing. Bam, okay. Bam, right there, that's where I would want it to happen. So let's check the frame number, 520. That's where I want my particle system to start. Let's start it at 520. Well, because you always have to have the end frame be after the front start frame. So 530. So it's going to last for 10 frames, this whole shatter. All right, 520. Lifetime of the particles will be 200. Now, the reason for that is you want the particles to fly everywhere and then to settle back down. Um, the cache, you want the cache size to be 1. I don't know why they default to 10. I always set it to 1. Um... Let's see, so we've got 10 frames, so we're going to emit like a thousand per, per, 
per whatever. Okay. Let's just see how that looks. And now the reason I've got simplify turned on, which means I'm not going to get I'm not going to be able to see any particles. So let's turn simplify off, in fact. Now I can see particles. Okay, so now you can see what happens. Just for 10 frames, they just kind of fall. That's not what we want. We want an explosion. So let's go back to this this thing. And how are we going to have an explosion? What I typically like to do is I typically like to turn the velocity up and then let's see I need some random anything that I can have random I don't know I don't know I just randomize everything uh, random random that stuff okay and now I want it to explode okay so that's better and now I don't want it to fall like that. I want it to just explode and everything goes flying really far. And so what I like to do is I like to turn the force of gravity down to way low, 0 0.1. Let's see how that works. So you can see that gravity has a much smaller influence on everything. And now I need to bring the end of this whole animation quite a bit further. Animation, or, or you can see gravity made much less of a difference. Okay, so how do I like that? Let's just start it right here. Switch over. Bam! Now I don't want it to be slow motion, so that's way too slow. So first off, let's set the velocity quite a bit higher. Maybe 20. Um, let's see how that looks. And that 10 frames is way too long. Okay, that's better. So the idea is the bullet, remember we aren't seeing the bullet. The bullet actually hit below the camera. Okay, now I'm just, I don't like the fact that it is so, let's emit from the volume. I wonder if that'll help. See, you notice how it's just like you've got them going in basically straight up, straight to the side, straight forward, and straight backwards. I want them to have some kind of angle. You know, I want them to be coming off at various angles. Let the surface tangent give the particle starting speed. 10 maybe? Rotate the surface tangent? I don't know. There we go, that's a lot better. I like that. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, now I just need to make that, that box explode. So if I go back to the box, I've got the particle system set up. Now I can add a modifier. Let's add the explosion modifier. Uh, where is that? Particles, particle, 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 explode. There we go. Okay, and now you notice what happens instead of seeing those actual boom. Okay, and then the last thing left to do is to really give this thing a nice effect. Let's add a solidify modifier. Now that has to go under the the uh, explode. So basically, when each when each one of these uh, these planes uh, explodes off, they are given a thickness. And now I can change that thickness by one of these values. Oh, it's that thickness one. I'm sorry. There we go. So let's see how that looks. It's not perfect. I could tweak it for a very long time, but I'm not going to. I am just going to say, hey, we have now basically blocked out our scene. And this will be the last tutorial for quite a while. Um, eventually, 
I'm going to be putting this whole character with his action into a scene um, where it's going to have, you know, background objects and all sorts of other stuff going on. Uh, and so I'll show you how to do that, but I've got to do quite a bit of work before I get to that point. And so you can expect not to see any more tutorials on this for probably at least two weeks. Hopefully, probably even longer than that. But let's see how we're doing. Alright, that's what our scene will look like. You can like me on Facebook, DX3 Studios. I love to hear your comments, especially the good ones. Uh, you guys, you know, be awesome. We're making our happy little explosions, if you've ever seen Bob Ross. Talk to you later.